<laughs> Hello, welcome to another episode of Loud Noises Podcast, an alternative music podcast. I'm Badger, with me as always is Gareth. I'm here. And Paul. Hiya. Yeah. We are three people who get together every week to talk about alternative music. Me, be they may, that's what it may be. <laughs> Got away that- from you there. <laughs> One what, more time in English? I nearly smashed that intro. <laughs> Fucking, you did. You went in with a lot so of confidence well, I know, and right? uh, a but, solid six out of ten. <laughs> yeah, nice. uh, we're going to talk about some new music as we always do. So this week we're going to talk about a new single from Greg Pistachio. I can't say his last name. <laughs> Pachato. Pachato. Greg Pachato of the Dillinger Escape Plan fame and the other band he did that I don't remember the name of. Uh, yeah, it's a solo track, I guess. Also, new albums from Pears, Body Count, and Downswing. Good times. Great times. That's, that's going to be up there for one of our more random well, pairings of albums. Yeah, it's a very interesting mix. Also, uh, we're going to play another sweet game of Don't Trust the Internet. It's back. It's back. By Every week until we some... run out of Amazon reviews, which will probably never happen. You, you say that. It's, it's more down to me trying to go, <sighs> who haven't I looked up yet? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, another round. And Paul may get some points back. Who knows? Nah. That's fun. Yeah. If you want to jump around to any of these features, you can do the timestamps in the description below. But for now, as always, we'll start with the news with Paul. Paul, news. News. Paul, me, doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Darkest Hour. This is, uh, darkest hour. <laughs> this is our Darkest Hour. This is our Darkest Hour. Considering the half an hour we've just spent trying to get this uh, to work <laughs> in the first place. Behind the scenes. They don't want to know the troubles we have behind the scenes. No, just pretend we're professional. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We're really not. Uh, yeah, so Darkest Hour have announced a couple of dates of a West Coast anniversary tour. Uh, so this is like the 25th year anniversary of Darkest Hour. Uh, and they are taking along with them uh, Misery Signals, uh, Sect, yeah. and Less Art, uh, who I think have just dropped a single a few weeks back. I think we missed it, unfortunately, but oh well. Uh, uh, but yeah, so they are doing three dates uh, across, like I say, the West Coast. So they're hitting uh, San Diego on the 19th of April, uh, Anaheim, California on the 20th, and then 21st is LA. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So- it's a shame this is in the uh, the West Coast because that's actually a pretty tasty lineup. I mean, I'd just like to see Sect. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah I'm still on a bit of a Sect. I would just like to go check them out. Yeah, yeah, I would I love, love to see Sect. Sect. Yeah, uh, Mystery yeah. Signals. Um, uh, they're hit and miss for me, uh, but more often than not, I like them. Uh, yeah. less, less out of always enjoyed, and yeah, Darkest Hour, bloody Darkest Hour, aren't they? So yeah, yeah, yes, mate, yes, but, mate, yes, mate. A nice little gig which we'll never go to. Yeah. If you're in California, you're all right. I mean, it says West Coast. It's just California. <laughs> yeah, it is just like three yeah, three cities in California. <laughs> yeah, so really should be a California anniversary tour, not yeah. the West Coast. And Fuck also the rest s- of America and the yeah. world. You don't- yeah. Anniversary tour. <laughs> Fuck you all, I'm- anniversary tour. We got I'm going to say, yeah, we say just California, but the state of California is pretty big. Does it take up the whole West Coast? Uh, pretty much. Okay, I'll allow it. <laughs> it's a hefty chunk. <laughs> it's a big chunk. Big old I, chunk. S- I say, I say... Pretty much like I have a fucking clue. Not a chance, do I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, good for you, California. Yeah. Go have nice, a mosh. nice little uh, American tar. Just Go have a very warm, sweaty yeah. mosh. Yeah. Uh, next. Next, a bit of uh, UK news. Text. Uh, yeah, uh, Tech Fest have announced. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just skipping straight over that terrible. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Segue. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. It's fine. Yeah, it right. did lead to Paul saying Tech Fest with a question mark at the end of it, which I quite enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Fest. That was the, that was the intended purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Go on. Uh, yeah. So Tech Fest have announced uh, to the bands. Uh, I think Band. they already put out one announcement, but uh, they've added a load more. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go through all these because there is a oh. lot of logos on there, some of which I can't read. Uh, but yeah, so I suppose the big ones are Ocean, uh, Fit for an Autopsy, uh, Love, uh, Matter Defiled. Yeah, the uh, boys. The band that keeps splitting up. <laughs> just just smithy, uh, in it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah uh, Frontier. Uh, I'm just looking through if there's any else that should part of me there. Uh, Cognizance. Uh, yeah, there's some good bands on that. Um, yeah. Can I just quickly say, as someone who hasn't got a vast knowledge of the bands who are on this lineup, mm-hmm. in I know in me. Right, yeah, me be on here? I was going to say this. <laughs> are they tech? I haven't yeah. listened to them since a single from the early 2000s. I, but, I don't even think what the song was, because every time I think of in me, I always end up singing three day Grace America. Right, okay. <laughs> I heard yeah, that's not in me. <laughs> I, know. I can't think what the song was, though. Well, I can't remember either. It I just. This I is... was in a band supporting them twice, and I still don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wait, which one? Bands. What? 
<laughs> Which, uh, the vehicle field supported them twice. No, uh, who did you support? In me, or the oh, in one me. where you yeah, sing this me, wrong sorry. song for? Yeah, in <laughs> okay. me. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I can't say if they fit or not, but I just see in me and I'm like, well, I've heard of them. Uh, this is not the lineup I thought they'd be on. But do you okay. Want, do you want a fun story about me being an idiot? Oh, yes. go on. I do <laughs> love a good fun story about so, you being an idiot. It, when I was in this band, we got offered the in me support and I thought it was a big deal. Yeah. It wasn't. Um, so I got overly excited and thought, oh, I better go out and buy some proper big equipment because that's what proper bands have. Proper big equipment. So not mm-hmm. good quality, just large. Big, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I went out and got a base cab that's literally the size of me as a person. <laughs> it's it, a little bit shorter, maybe about five foot something high. And I was like, yeah, now I'm properly ready to support in me. It was just in a small venue in Manchester, not big at all. And I got there and the bassist from me came and said, Right, mate, can I borrow your base? It's a lot bigger than mine. <laughs> I turned around, his was like at least a quarter of the size. I was like, I have just wasted a lot of money on this. <laughs> <laughs> when you said, though, uh, you know, you thought it was a big deal to see the bigger, yeah. it just reminds me when our, our friend Martin uh, once supported Crazy Town. <laughs> and just, it, it, it was the talk of the fucking town, but it was just like, at the end of the day, guys, it is still Crazy Town. Yeah. And also, like... <laughs> Crazy Town, 10 years after they were famous. <laughs> well, more than that. It's 10 years since Butterfly. <laughs> No one should get <laughs> But it's still that bit of just like, but we've heard of them. <laughs> sure, anyway, sorry, maybe. TechFest. I'm sure yeah, people yeah. like Oh, yeah, sorry. Te- TechFest. <laughs> oh, sorry, we got well sidetracked. <laughs> yeah, about your terrible stories about mm-hmm. big bases. Uh, yeah, so uh, for anyone who doesn't know, TechFest is kicking off from the 2nd to the 6th of July uh, at Newark Showground. Uh, yeah, so three days festival with load bands to announce. Tickets are pretty cheap for what it is. Uh, 75 quid plus 20 quid uh, camping. 3rd to the 5th. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, the, so the band, so the main stage is a third to the fifth. Yeah, uh, okay. I think there's a uh, an early access. Um, uh, oh, is it one of those things where you just sit around and feel getting drunk for a day? Yeah, oh, so I think good. there's yeah, going to be like yeah, yeah. a few bands on uh, a couple of the stages on the day before, uh, so on the Thursday, and then yeah. I'm assuming the Sunday everyone gets kicked the fuck out. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you, I mean to be fair, like I'm talking at the price, it's, so it's ninety five pound with camping. Mm-hmm. It's not too shabby for That's a three day festival. All that. Yeah, fair play. If I knew I liked half these bands, I'd probably go to this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there is there is a fair few bands today that I do yeah. like, but I'm also over thirty five, so the like fuck, I'm sleeping in a field for a weekend. <laughs> I generally, I generally think this is the kind of thing that a thirty five would attend because it's just tech. Yeah, I feel like tech's more appreciative for the older generation. I mean, I I'm not going to lie, you you I, we take the piss, but like the Saturday headline of the Ocean, I would one hundred percent watch them. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Yeah, so I know fit for an autopsy. Yeah, everyone knows yeah. fit for an autopsy. I, I, I think I've ring. I might have heard of Reflections, but I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's definitely one of those band names that, like, I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before, yeah, yeah. and I feel bad for not knowing who they are. Yeah, but not bad enough to check them out. <laughs> yeah, <fair laughs> enough. yeah, uh, yeah, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Nice, another UK festival that yeah. may or may not get cancelled in. We the have next the best festivals. Time. Nah, that'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that in a bit. Yeah, yeah. Next, next, next. next. Um, Haley Williams. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, Hayley Williams, uh, also known as Petals for Armour at the moment, has announced a big old run of dates across North America, UK and Europe. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, so this is kicking off from uh, May the... I can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> May Sorry. the 13th in Amsterdam. To, there you go. Yeah, go on. So May the 19th in Cologne. And then America after that. Yeah. yeah. America. America. Yeah, so for for the UK listeners, we've got uh, Brighton and London uh, mm-hmm. on the fifteenth and the sixteenth. Because God uh, forbid you go anywhere north. Yeah, God or damn it. Wales or Scotland or Ireland. God damn it. Or fucking Yorkshire. Come on. Sick. <laughs> Sick <God. laughs> you know, like you know, like twenty nineteen was the year of everybody playing uh, Leeds. Yeah, yeah. Is it just, just like nothing. twenty? Is twenty twenty the year of just not going past the like yeah, north south? Yeah, just <laughs> It's really warm down south, apparently. I mean, so, that's... Hayley Williams touring five songs. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> There's the album coming around this time of the tour. Yeah. No, yeah. I thought it was quite cool. I saw her doing this tour. I, I, in my head, I didn't see her as touring this. I kind of saw it as just like, here's my side project. And I thought she'd do maybe some American a, dates. A, yeah, a couple yeah. of bony, like... A splattering. Yeah, splattering a date. Yeah. Full on tour in it. Fair play. Yeah, fair enough. She's yeah, got yeah. nothing else going on, I suppose. <laughs> Paramore's just kind of chilling about. Yeah. Ready yeah. when you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just sat around going, oh, I want to play some songs too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, good uh, but stuff. Yeah. yeah, great stuff. Um, like you say, it's 
I feel bad being that person who says that I'm not going to go down south to watch this, but I'm not going to go down south to watch this. No, it's um, if it not... was like I say, if there was a northern day, I would 100 percent be on the world for it. But mm. I just, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got a full time job and a mortgage to pay for. I can't yeah. be scooting off down south, whatever. The music so far that she's put out has not warrant me paying the travel and accommodation and ticket price. And then yeah, that's it. To be it's there like to justify the trip. So. Yeah, I imagine these gigs would be fun, uh, and I would like to hear those songs live. But yeah, uh, there's not enough excitement in me to yeah. pay that price. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you are a fan, then please, by all means, let us know how it is. But I mean, the next thing is yeah. more tempting to go to London for. Talking of not travelling and spending money on things, Paul. Shut <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. up! <laughs> I totally want to go to London and watch Shy Halud. <laughs> I mean, you've got to go to this, surely. I feel like I have to, don't you I? You do, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so this is obviously, I think we talked about it uh, when it first got announced uh, that yeah. Shia Lud were playing in London. They're also playing Manchester Punk Festival, Heart of which Manchester is Punk weird. Fest, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, they've just announced the tour, oh, well, not the tour spot, but the supports for the uh, London date. Uh, so I'll start from the bottom to the top because I think the top is the one that excites us the most. Uh, so, first band is Infraction, uh, then Ingrained, then Dropset. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the main support is so, yeah. our favourites, Ithaca. Hey. Uh, I was expecting a mighty, mighty Ithaca. Then. <laughs> they are mighty. They are mighty. Um, I mean, this is all kicking off at the mighty, mighty New Cross Inn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously. I've never been to New Cross Inn, actually. No, me neither. I do want to yeah. check it out. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this I don't. tempting. Yeah, very tempting. Do you want to drive tempting. down? I don't want to drive down. <laughs> I want to get the train down. There you go. Road trip on Badger. <laughs> no! Badger, <laughs> road trip! trip. <laughs> Don't road trip me. <laughs> no, um, no, yeah, no, it's tempting. It is very tempting. Like I say, like Shia Lud are an amazing band. Uh, I remember seeing them before they split up originally. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Ithaca have always put on a fantastic show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I wouldn't mind checking out the other bands as well. But... Um, yeah, so for anyone who doesn't know the details of this, it is Friday the 24th of April uh, at the New Cross Inn. Uh, tickets are 17 50 advance. Yeah. So it's not too bad. That's reasonable as fuck. Yeah, it's reasonable, reasonable as fuck. Shall we all look at booking the day off again? Look yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know because Shia Lud are playing in the Manchester Punk Festival yeah. a mm-hmm. couple of days afterwards. I mean, it'd be nice if they could play that as well because they can play anything. We've proven that recently with the Big Thief Tour. That's mm-hmm. a very good point, actually, anything. yeah. So... <laughs> I know you listen to Manchester Punk Festival. Put it <laughs> Cheers. Go we'll on. Go to that instead. It's down the road. They are pretty punk as fuck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next. Next. Uh, right, so final story for the week. So we are flying through them, which is good. Uh, yes. But it's quite a big one. Uh, or to us, it's not the biggest story, but like it, it leads into some bigger discussions. Congratulations so- to us. I feel we should say for credit for us. So we've not mentioned the coronavirus on this podcast yet. Yeah, I've been mm-hmm. fighting, I made I've been fighting that course. <laughs> I, sl- I slid into a shit joke possibly last week, but besides that, we managed to avoid it. Yeah, It's unavoidable but, now. Yeah, it's kind of coming for music, so we kind of have to talk about it. Um, so, yeah, so South by South Fest, uh, Festival in Texas has been cancelled mm-hmm. mm. uh, due to... Uh, yeah, so the city of Austin has decided to cancel it uh, rather than the organisers themselves. Yeah, uh, Austin for is closed for the next three months, apparently. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So for anyone who doesn't know what South by Southwest Festival is... What? <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> but <laughs> also, it's... It's like one of the biggest festivals that happens in like the city, uh, like Austin. Um, it's a massive music festival. It has film festival as well. It's got a ton of other events going on. Yeah, there. it's got it's one of the most diverse festivals of, like across all different spectrums of music, as well as like you're saying with like art and media in general. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so as we say, so because of the coronavirus, the yeah the city of Austin themselves have decided to cancel the event. Uh, which is, from what I remember reading, it is the first time in 34 years it's happened. Yeah. Uh, in fact, yeah, uh, actually, I've got a statement from them, which is the city of Austin has cancelled the match dates for uh, South by Southwest and South by Southwest EDU, um, and South by Southwest will faithfully follow the city's directions. Uh, devastated to share this news with you. Uh, the show must go on, is in our DNA, uh, and this is the first time in 34 years that a match event will not take place. Uh, there's a ton of other stuff about uh, health mm. and safety, but yeah, basically, it's a pretty big deal when they're looking at cancelling the entire thing. Like, I imagine that the South by Southwest festival brings a lot of money. Oh yeah, into yeah. the city of Austin, um, and obviously, there's a lot of people that spend a lot of money to get there. Uh, I've had friends in the past who have actually paid to get over there so that they can play. 
Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah. So it is a really good thing for getting yourself out there um, in front of like some industry uh, pro- like professionals. Uh, and it is a really good opportunity if you ever get offered the chance to get over there. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of bands this year who are going to miss out on that. So I remember, uh, so Petrol Girls, who we've talked about in the past, mm-hmm. like they yes. pulled out of uh, a few gigs. But I remember sp- specifically at the time, they mentioned that, oh, but we will still be going to like South by Southwest. They're just like, not, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Shame. I know, but th- I, I still find it, this scared me a little bit more about it. Not that I'm worried about getting the coronavirus. I, oh. I'm not going into that. I don't care. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's a virus. What are you going to do? Yeah. Just don't be a scruff. Yeah. Just, <laughs> well, yeah. we can't just lock yourself indoors. Wash your hands. Yeah. Um, but no, the thing is, this is the first time I only just tweeted, just like, oh yeah, just like a council or like the city council could just turn around and be like, a gathering of people in, in our area. No. <laughs> and it just, I know it sounds so dumb, but that never even crossed my mind. They're just like, because bringing it closer to home with like festivals that me and might be going to, or anyone who's listening, if anything they got planned coming up. But it doesn't have to be the organisers who, you know, make these decisions because chances are they wanted to go ahead. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the council of the area they are just turn around and be like, no, nah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're shutting down the borders of your, our, our little towns. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, with things like these, like, you are obviously uh, kind of tied to the licences that you can get. Yep. And if someone cancels that licence, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, and yeah, the, I mean, the big for me, for me is, like, obviously Southwest Southwest is one of the biggest things, but... Like, if this is affecting them that much, like, how is it going to affect everyone else in the run-up to, like, festival season? Yeah. Because, uh, obviously, we talked about things like Tech Fest and things like that. Like, the UK is being hit by people uh, being affected by the coronavirus. Uh, Europe is as well. Um, we've seen a, seen a ton of Asian tours being cancelled. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, just this week, Slipknot t- cancelled their Asian tour. Yeah, Venom Prison did as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. throw a rock and that, you'll find a band at the moment who's had yeah. to cancel. I think it's because like, I think like Asia's like festival season is kind of coming up as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I think so. A lot of bands have, who were on those Asian festivals have now had to pull out of those. It's a shame, yep. especially because I think Asia doesn't get a lot of tours. Um, not as much from the Western audiences. No, yeah, that's what um, I mean. yeah, it's a pretty big deal if you can get over there. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's just like this is like. Is this the start, or is is it going to be? Uh, is it just is it just like this next couple of months where things are going to be bad, um, or like say, is this going to be the, the state of things for the next the next it year? It just totally depends on how much more panic the mainstream media want to spread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. True. Because they I do suppose... a damn good job at the moment of making sure the only media you can possibly consume is telling you the coronavirus is fucking coming for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's like the, the most of the people that are going to these things aren't in the in-risk group. I mean, there's obviously like people who, who have uh, immunodeficiencies. Uh, so, yeah, immune systems will try and kill them just for waking up. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so those are the genuine people that are at risk. But the majority of the people that go to festivals and things like that are in the pretty good age range to survive these things I don't think that's uh, an well, argument though if they are no. looking at cancer is it just like most people that go are like quite young though aren't they they'll be alright <laughs> <laughs> well no but that's something like they're, the, they're not in the in risk groups like they'll, they'll maybe they'll catch the virus but like it won't be like as life threatening yeah. but I yeah. suppose the argument of that is that it helps spread it yeah like when you look at like um, Rebellion the punk festival in Blackpool where the mm-hmm. average age of the bands like you added all their age together is in like the high 300s <laughs> <laughs> yeah alright that's an in risk group like yeah. all the fans can come but yeah half the bands shouldn't play <laughs> yeah. it's hopefully, fine just put a big perspex glass in between the bands it'd be fine yeah hopefully it'll all kind of simmer down it shouldn't affect too many people but we'll see what happens we yeah. will see yeah keep an eye on it like I say we've had a few Asian tours cancelled but I mean obviously the coronavirus or we call it covid-19 um mm. it'll uh, yeah it kind of originated there so uh, yeah. that they're kind of the more at risk to catch it uh but yeah we are starting to see it's now starting to affect like the other side of the world yeah so yeah i guess we we'll just have I, to wait I, and see um, i will truly believe that this is a genuine massive widespread issue then we should be worried if and i appreciate this is off topic but mm-hmm. if wrestlemania gets cancelled because if Vince McMahon <laughs> gives in then everybody should give in <laughs> yeah <laughs> And that man loves his money. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, but, uh, just people, chill out, wash your hands, don't be stupid. Sneeze with your mouth covered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't be a dick. Then wash yeah. your hands. 
do all those things you should have been doing anyway. Yeah. yeah. If you're on. not washing your hands, like there's, there's the, the easy tip to remember is while you're washing your hands, count, sing happy birthday twice. Or as a friend recommended to me, sing the entire Napalm Death Back catalog. <laughs> that works. That works too. Or if you're feeling particularly emo, just the, the opening bit to Black Parade before it kicks in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen loads of these. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> if it's one thing that you know an epidemic brings out in the world, it's a good meme. <laughs> it's a good meme. All right. It's always a good meme at the end when the world is fucked. Yeah. Good. Oh, well, hopefully it'll work out for the best. Yeah, it'll be fine. Or the end of the world. One of the two. <sighs> cool. <laughs> anyway, is that for news? That's it for news, mate. All done. Yeah. More stuff will happen in the next week. We'll talk about it next time. For now, we'll go into new music. So we'll start with the single of the week, which is a. Uh, I've already forgot to say it. Greg Pistachio. You nailed it this time, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Greg Pistachio. Probably said that wrong still. Sorry, Mm -hmm. mate. Uh, He dropped the... So this is the vocalist of... The former vocalist of the Dillinger Escape Plan. He dropped a new single, guessing it's solo, uh, called Fire for Water. And it sounds a bit like a Dillinger song, (laughs) which I'm fine with, because that's what I kind of wanted. Yeah. So it's a cool track. Uh... I think it's like the intro's quite, I think it's quite short for, I think that's probably the only difference, it's quite, something like three minutes long. So about that, yeah. Yeah, so it's not too long, uh, which I suppose for an artist that's come from a Dillinger background, you, it's a short song for him, I guess. Uh, one third of it's taken up by a very long intro, when you think it's going to kick in, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it's like, yeah, it's cool, little tune, kind of a nice little first outing, considering his last project wasn't the best <laughs> uh, what do you guys think uh, uh, for the first thing I was going to say just like I found this release so funny because the amount of people I've seen online just literally being like yeah I like it but I'm I'm, I'm still scared like I'm still worried what this is building to because he could totally fuck you over <laughs> um, I thought this was fine like I, as someone who hasn't been a massive follower of Dillinger or this guy's work I, I like the the aforementioned pile of shit which Dillinger fans really couldn't handle um, yeah, the, the, I, I enjoyed this track. I'm sort of in the same boat of, of not like being completely overwhelmed by it and getting excited by anything. Um, yeah, it's like I, I enjoy this guy's vocals more than anything else. I didn't get completely bowled over in excitement. It was just like, okay, cool. I like where this is going. And I'll just keep holding on to find out where this is going. <laughs> Gotta say, Dylan just saw a bit of a, a new one for me, but I never really massively got into And We did the retrospective of the first album, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. a while back. Calculating Infinity. Yeah, and that sounded like the sort of insanity, which I love. Mm. Uh, but I don't think I'm ever going to ever going to get anything like that again. No. So I'm sort of going, is this like a new path for me? I'm like, all right, it's kind of cool. I can get into this. But I'm sort of coming at it with a, a, a new sort of uh, new ears or so. And yeah. It's good, but I'm not too <laughs> sure where it's going and what we're going to get if it comes to an album. I like I like your indecisiveness about whether it's good. <coughs> like, it's good. Yeah, well, it, it, it's it is, but then I'm just like, it's not it's it's not blowing me away or anything. It's it doesn't seem particularly uh, it's not particularly exciting that I found. Ah, uh, see, I'm I'm the opposite. Like, I I'd love this, um, yeah. but it's again I, as a an ardent Dillinger fan. Uh, it kind of ticks the boxes that I wanted from a, mm. a Greg song. Uh, it's also got, uh, I believe this has also got uh, the drummer on there as well. Uh, oh, Chris, okay. Uh, I can't remember his name. So forgive me for that. I don't uh, mean. But yeah. Um, yeah, so he's the drummer on this one, I think. Uh, but yeah, no, I love it. Like, I think Greg's vocals are probably some of the best in metal. Uh, I just think he's, he's delivering his range uh, uh, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he's no Mike Patton, but no one is. <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a close second for me. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Um, so I mean, I'm interested to see where he goes from this. Um, again, with the last main band he did, I wasn't a big fan of. Um, but all of his Dillinger stuff, I've been a big fan of. Uh, he did a he did a solo thing before he joined Dillinger, uh, before he joined Dillinger as well. Yeah, uh, which was really good. Uh, that was more of an industrial thing, though. So that was more of like the Nine Inch Nails see, cause kind of this- vibe. This definitely had a, quite the industrial feel mm-hmm. I found yeah. to it. I mean, that's where my brain went. They're just like, oh, we've got a bit of Nine Inch Nails, like Trent Reznor sort of feel to this mm. as well. Yeah, which, it's got a little bit of that in it, yeah. Which I'm fine with. I'm mm-hmm. down with that. Especially no, yeah, in his vocals at points. So I was like, well, this is cool. Like, <laughs> it's one of them, it. just like, it, it just keeps you going, just going like, okay, all right, I can see, I can see something from this. <laughs> yeah, this just seemed like to be somebody who's like just flexing his own tastes a bit more, uh, rather than like, 
I don't want to say tied back, but or tied down by, but like kind of uh, limited by other people's opinions as well. Yeah, I think it's very much stuck in the genre that's expected as well, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you say, I'm I'm more excited about hearing what comes next because this is exactly what I wanted from like a post Dillinger band. Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm definitely up for hearing more. Yes, I agree <laughs> with those things that were said. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, like I say, if you're a Dillinger fan, I think you'll be happy with this. Mm-hmm. Or if you like a bit of that kind of Godflesh Nine Inch Nails sort of sound, you'll also probably enjoy this. Uh, it's a very good vocal delivery as well from Greg. Uh, pretty happy with it. I look forward to the debut album, which is going to come out. Are they actually? Is it announced? Is it will be a there's a not full length album. It's one of these because there's not a lot on social media or anything. Yeah, it's like there's no page for it or anything. I've not found. But the only thing I found is the YouTube video for this, uh, which in the description of that YouTube video states, this is the first single from his upcoming debut album, Child Soldier, no, fuck me, Child Soldier, Creator <laughs> of God. So, uh, and yeah, obviously it's like Paul said, it's got the drummer, Chris Penn, or Penny. Penny, sorry, that's it, yeah. Yeah, uh, it doesn't mention... Who anybody else like except for producers and stuff? I don't mention any of the musicians. So unless Greg did the rest, I don't know. Could he just play <laughs> guitar? Yeah. But uh, yeah, good stuff. I'd say, as I say, if you're a fan, oh, the other band he was in was Kill Up Be Killed. That was terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're a fan of Dillinger or anything like I said, yeah, I'd definitely check this out. It's a good tune. Yeah, uh, agree. Yeah, I'd agree. Good. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad we all agreed on that. <laughs> so, nice one. That was it. The single of the week. Sweet. So, done. Nailed it. It is Nailed the it. single of the week because it's the only single of the week. Yeah. yeah. No other singles came no, out. No other singles came out <laughs> that we wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how this works. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Swiftly moving on, 10. We've got three albums to burn through, so let's crack on with those. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Pears dropped the new album. Pears. Yes. Of Pears 3. Uh, Pears. Oh, Just Pears. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Pears. Okay. Who gives a shit? Okay. <laughs> Pears might care. Pears released another album. Yeah, cool. It's good. their third one. <laughs> uh, we've reviewed two singles of this before, so we did Comfortably Dumb and uh, Cynical Sin- Sincere. Serene. Serene. That's what I said. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gareth, you can take the lead on this, because is you, it not, you picked it. I know. Is it not cheating, though? No. I mean... I've got things to say. Paul will have things to say. Okay. We will all have things to say, but you can go first. So I'll just, I'll just quickly get my like gush <laughs> out into the yeah, world. Yeah, you, you gush. I liked everything about this album. Yeah. Good stuff. No. Um, this for me, like, so I was, I loved these singles. I've basically listened to those two singles every day since they came out. Like, it's on basically any playlist or anything I want to pop on. I mean, absolutely slamming it. Um, this album lived up to those singles for me. Uh, it was one of the more interesting new punk albums I've heard in a while where the, the songs have such diversity to them in comparison to what they could have been. Um, they, they have the potential to basically be uh, a run-of-the-mill generic punk band. Um, but they don't do that. Basically, I'm saying, like, they have the quality there to just do a catchy hook and just blast out your typical punk oh, yeah, songs, okay. you know, song after another, and do perfectly fine. They don't. They have such a great brand where they have taken a little bit of everything that you could possibly ever want in punk music and created their own. I fucking love it. And I think this is their... So I've listened back since uh, and listened to their back catalogue, which is fucking solid. But this is definitely their more um, unique effort to having a bit more diversity in their range. And it works so fucking well. Um, straight off the bat, while listening to it, like I love the opening track, Killing Me, but when Zero Wheels kicked in, if I saw that live, that might take me from standing at the back, being like an old man just drinking my pint and telling someone to hold my pint as I wanted to run into the pit. <laughs> I fucking love that song. Um, but yeah, I don't want... It, if anyone's listened to this podcast before... This is totally me. I was always mm. going to love this. I'm so glad I like it as much as this I do. Quintessence is you. It's 100% an me. Album. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. I think it's fucking fantastic. I'm so happy that uh, I've sort of gotten into this band over the last year. Uh, but what I'm more interested to know is, how do you guys feel? Because it's punk in general for you guys. Yeah. It's normally a bit of a hard sell. It's not your go-to. So when we did the singles, I remember like, I think I think Paul might have been similar with me, where it was like, we really like the hardcore elements to bring to the table. And the punk bits were very good, but they weren't just what we can listen to normally. Yeah. Um, it's mm-hmm. really, I think the certain punk parts and the singles we listened to were very like no effects kind of punk, which I can appreciate, but then I don't listen to on a regular basis. So yeah. I could like happily lead those bits, but then enjoy super enjoy the hardcore parts. Um, but when you say with this album, like I fucking really enjoyed it based on the fact that like Killing Me 
is a fucking cracking track to yeah. start with. Reminds me like basically all this album it's a, it's a solid mix of I think there's literally something for everyone to enjoy on this album mm. they use so many different types of styles of music and in punk and outside of punk I think and like hardcore and stuff uh, I got vibes of like gallows in here like old and new gallows like some vocal parts straight sound very weighed yeah in parts uh, but yeah it's just like as well as sounding like Joey Cape yeah. from Lagwag at a yeah. point <laughs> but it works yeah. fine it yeah. looks works really well uh, <laughs> yeah so it's, I think it's like just, it's a very well written album and what I super enjoyed about it is like they have all these different elements and styles in, uh, so you never know what's going to happen next. So you'd be like in the middle of a punk bit, next thing you know it's like a very hardcore bit, and then there's like a more like a melodic bit, or it'll just it can, it'll literally just swerve off the tracks and change direction at any given yeah. moment. And I fucking love that when a band does that, and they do it really well. Uh, fucking great. I also like the fact that there's a song called Dial Up, yes. which for some reason. Seems to reference yeah. a couple of It was another songs. thing I was going to mention, I forgot, and I'll let you talk about that song in yeah. particular, but <laughs> literally the fact of, like, they, amongst all this, which I think is fantastic, fucking great sense of humour in there as well, yeah. which I also believe should be in punk. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I, you need that humour with your, you know, more political side of yeah. punk as well. And it, they nail that as well. I love it. There's obviously some, like, good, like, serious material in here, like, lyrically and whatever else, but there's also, like, obviously... Like you say, it's a good comical sort of fun yeah. stuff. Not comical, but fun. I say, like, Dial, is, there's clearly a reference to Mambo number no. five in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, uh, that's one that struck me the most because I just listened to it and I went, Did you see Mambo number no. five? What? Uh, and there's like a couple, I, I need to dig out the lyrics for this song and piece together what the song is. I can't, there's another bit uh, in it, it escapes me now. But it's, yeah, it's, I super enjoy the, like that. It's quite clever as well. Yeah. And no one asked for this to be done, but I'm fucking glad they did it. <laughs> yeah, it's spot on. There's so. a few lyrics throughout this album, which I really enjoy. I remember, so, mm. Travelling Time, the wonderful last track, yeah. where they sort of slow things down a bit. It's just a lovely little line, which I really liked, where he sings about a time where he thought he'd die before he's 23... Uh, didn't think he'd outlive his uh, liver, but now he worries about his knees. Yeah, that <laughs> was the one I was gonna t- I was gonna mention. Yeah, uh, it definitely stood out. Like it just that lyric just spoke to me. I know, my, right? My, my, my spine. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, go for, for me, I, I've, got, I've, got, I've got opinions as well. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, unfortunately, they're exactly the same as your guys, so it's not really that. Um, hey. yeah, 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 yeah. No, like this, like we we said near the beginning, like I'm not. I think me and Badger are the same. Like we're not massive followers of punk. Yeah, uh, I appreciate good punk. Um, I'm mainly a hardcore kid, uh, but no, I like the. Oh, in fact, I love uh, what pairs are doing in yeah. so much as like they're kind of like floating between genres, but yet somehow making it one cohesive unit. Yeah, uh, as you say, like they've got that no effects style punk in there in droves, uh, but when they mix it up with like the hardcore elements and like some of the off. Like offbeat rhythms and stuff like that. I just like just play with their sound a lot more, which mm-hmm. is really cool. Because um, as you guys have said, like it could easily have fallen into just being a standard like punk album, yeah, uh, and it would have done fine. Uh, people would have loved it. But the fact that they've gone that extra distance to kind of build in those other well, uh, elements is, to it, what they've done is created a sound where I would happily introduce it to you two, two mm-hmm. people who wouldn't really pick up a punk album over a choice of anything yeah, of, yeah. of things you're into yeah. but this made it a lot more accessible and instantly just more interesting than just like you guys know you're not into that into punk you're not going to listen to a punk album peers have just decided to go no 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 we, we've got you <laughs> <laughs> no I think this is generally like you said, I was kind of said like there's literally something on here for everybody yeah. and like you say like, like you said oh you wouldn't give this to us if it was just punk Mm. And I'm kind of like, it is a punk album, I guess. Oh no, is this unbestakably a punk album? Yeah, but it's, at the same it's time not a pink ca- by numbers punk album. No, this yeah. is a band which is putting a lot of effort in every single detail of every single song. I feel like if you if fucking was, massive credit for it. One of those things where, like uh, the kind of release I love. If it was, it was like back in the old days of like simple, like you're in a CD shop, and you've got to put this into one genre on mm-hmm. the shelf. You'd be, you'd have to kind of wedge it somewhere awkwardly, <laughs> balance between metal or like hardcore punk or metal or whatever else. It's got so much in it. Uh, I would generally recommend this to pretty much anybody because mm-hmm. I think there'll at least be a one or two songs in this album, regardless of your musical taste in life, that you probably at least enjoy. Yeah. Unless obviously you, you like just like Bavarian folk music, then <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> There's no Bavarian folk music. Give it a fucking spin. Why not? Give, give it, 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 get into it. I think this is great though because the the amount of different aspects of punk itself within this one album. If you don't find anything in here you like, just never bother with punk. 
yeah. your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. If you can't this... find something here you like, then yeah, that's fair. You just there's no if they've covered every possible aspect, and I feel like era of punk you would ever yeah. want to hear. <laughs> this is yeah. like the litmus test if if you can stand punk or not. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah there's the fact that it like you say because it covers so many like gamuts of like the punk genre, mm. as it were, like. Uh, it just yeah, it ticks so many boxes. For, it, or it will take so many boxes for so many people. Uh, and yeah, for me, I one hundred percent am behind this album because this is what I want from a punk album. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm super on board with this. Yeah, yeah. For me, this is easily one of the most interesting new punk albums I've heard in the longest time, and is. I, I, what was the last one you guys wrote? It was a both loath, uh was an instant, mm-hmm. just like this could definitely end up on a sort of albums of the year list. Yeah, I'd yeah, be yeah. very, um, I would be fucking amazed if Pairs doesn't make it to sort of a top five list for me for albums of the year. Yeah, I Fair. adore this album. Yeah, check it out, goddamn right now. Hell yes, yeah, I, I love it. Agreed. Yeah, very good. Well done, Pairs. I you did, it. You did and it. I guys. did it. I brought a <laughs> punk band to the table and it didn't get shit on. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, it's a bit long. It's only a crisp 30 minutes, 38 seconds. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of tracks in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. 14 <laughs> tracks in 30 minutes. Which, Nailed it. And it doesn't feel like 30 minutes. No. And I mean that in a good way. Yes. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Uh, what was I going to say? The problem, and, and I think, because I think we did the singles and we were like f- f- on the fence with them. You so enjoy, it's probably that thing you enjoy yeah. aspects from both. yeah yeah but it wasn't a whole album I'm just happy to sit well it's like yeah when you get like a whole album delivered yeah. like this it's like I'm just happy to listen to this full thing and I'm super enjoying it and sometimes singles can be a bit sort of when they're isolated it can be a bit like ah but yeah. good I'm I think that's this. it because because we with the singles it's like we were picking out the elements we liked and the elements yeah. we don't like like in the, in the space of the album the bits that we don't really like that much kind of just fly by in like 30 seconds yeah. and we're onto something we like again straight away yeah. uh, like I say with a single it's a bit harder to like look at it that objectively but yeah. no album wise I think this is great um, um, yeah check it out goddamn right now and also yeah. come back to the UK soon so I can go see you buy all your merch and get really sweaty Mm-hmm. Yes, please, pretty please. This, this, this makes me yeah. act, this, honestly. This songs on here, which literally made me go like, I want, I want to get into, <laughs> I want to get into the mess again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on your pairs. You did it. Right, good time. Cool. Got it. Got it. Go now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh wait, no. We've got, we got more albums. There's more albums. Oh yeah. And you got a whole feature you do. Uh, Just give me a bell. So we on to the next album then. So we got Body Count. We dropped the new album Carnivore. I was not ready for this to come out so soon. We only did Bum Rush like yeah, they just a week dropped, ago, two yeah. weeks ago. Did they end Sorry. up dropping two singles, <laughs> but the second one... Did, did, did the second one just come out with the album? I don't uh, know. I don't know. I don't remember there being a second single. Oh, was Car- did Carnival originally come out as a single? I don't know. We didn't follow this very well. Or we did, <laughs> and apparently it didn't do anything. But we oh, reviewed... There was, yeah, we they, listened to the whole goddamn album. They released Carnival. <laughs> That's all we know. They released Carnival last December. And I think we didn't do it because... It was body count? It was... No. no, 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 no. <laughs> it was released on the 13th of December. And I feel something important happened around that date. Present shopping. I don't know. I thought, you, I thought you got married. Oh, yeah. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. I mean, I did buy presents as well. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. You also got presents at your wedding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Classic. Still wait for your presents. <laughs> it's a good thing your your lovely wife doesn't listen to this. <laughs> yeah. Christmas and I'll have you know I got married on the 11th, not the 13th. I yeah, know, but you're still in New York around the time. Yeah, that, <laughs> so we didn't recall. That's hence why we didn't do Carnival. That yeah. makes sense. Which I, which I kind of glad in a way because I wasn't ready for Carnival as a track. So fucking heavy. Mm-hmm. And it was... I know like they're a hardcore band and they've got heavy elements, but that fucking first track is so fucking heavy. Yeah. Yeah, this fucking ever, tune, ever. right? Yeah, man. I probably would have been more excited about this if it, uh, if I if that was the first track I listened to, because uh, also, so if you listen to us do the single review of Bum Rush, you'll know by now that me and Badger are <laughs> children, and Paul is a still a bit of a child, but he held it together better than we did. Yeah. Um, but hearing Ice T shout "Bum" a lot made us giggle a lot. Yeah. Uh, I've got past that now. Yeah. Um, and when that tune comes on, like I've had it on a playlist as well. It's fucking good. And then when Carnival came in, I was like, fuck me. Instantly, this album kicks off 
and you go, this is far better than I expected this to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, from like you say, from Carnivore into Point the Finger, which mm. I think is the one that has Riley guy Gale. from Power Trip on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Riley Gale, uh, and yeah. then yeah, in a bum rush, uh, those three tracks on their own are just ooh, fucking nice. Yeah, honestly, I completely agree. Those three tracks are fucking fantastic, mm-hmm. hardcore, but also a great level of fun and. Pretty spot on. Like, yeah. fa- like I said, far better than you would ever have thought they should be, but a well-deserved, like, great songs. Mm-hmm. I'll say, would, I'll leave track four. Well, that's it. Then that happens. Then we'll track four happens. That, we'll, <laughs> speak, we'll speak about track four in a bit. Okay. Uh, I don't wanna, we're on a good run of being positive. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the first, as you say, like, the first two tracks were just fucking raging. I'm really into it. Track four did break that, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But then you like, kind of get onto another level. Another level's a cold song, and I feel like mm-hmm. the second half of this album's a bit the first track is so strong and I feel like the back half of this album is a bit after track four is a bit up and downy a bit more yeah it's, uh, it's not as consistent yeah there's like, still some fucking great tracks in there though, yeah there's a couple I mean I'd say like so another level's got Jamie Jaster on it with Hate Breed I also I found his for a guest vocalist to be there to basically correct me if I'm wrong to just have some uh, backing vocals and normal jobs it just didn't yeah. seem that like, necessary think, uh, yeah I, I mean, swear, you know, if he was there and he wanted to be in it, cool, but it's just like, yes, I see. give him, give yeah. him a verse or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know, I, it wasn't a massively standout on the track for me. No. Um, but when I think you've got IC being your vocalist. I'm just thinking if you compare that to Point the Finger with a dude from Power Trip, and his mm-hmm. vocals fucking killed in yeah. that. It was so good. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's still a cool track. I think, like, I say the rest of the album, the only kind of, and I don't want to, like, discredit the song, it's, it's all right. So when I'm gone, it's preluded with a little spoken part from yeah. Ice T explaining mm-hmm. that, that the song is written about someone who's died, and the premise of the song is it wants you shouldn't like say all the nice things to someone once they're dead. You should try and say them before they yeah. die, which is yeah. a good message. Yeah. And Sentiment accurate. and lyrics in our track yeah. are spot on. Yeah. That chorus I could have done without. I think <laughs> the thing is, I saw, cause, so this song features Amy Lee from Evanescence. Yeah, and I was like, okay, that might be interesting. So it kind of drew me to go check it out. I'll make point of checking it out because it's got her on it, and I wanted to see what that sounds like. Her vocals just sound exactly what you expect. Like, yeah. just that. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's she's got uh, she's a fantastic vocalist. Yeah, I mean, she can sing. Um, uh, but then it's like, but then because I don't know if it's because she's on it or what, but the whole track sounds very of their genre, like Evanescence's genre. Mm-hmm. It sounds. Mm-hmm. It's not new metal. I don't know what it is. That kind of stuff. it did sort of. They had that rappy yeah. guy at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they are now. Yeah, it's like a like symphonic metal. Yeah, yeah, like, know, yeah. A wh- like a more operatic new metal or something. I don't know what you want to call it. I haven't had to look into Evanescence in a while. I don't know what they're up to. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't care. Um, so I think that was like a bit of a weird track. But then obviously you go back, bang, back into the critical beatdown. Mm-hmm. Oh fucking hell! Right. <laughs> That's not, I. That's a fucking tune. Just like you know when, what? When, the problem with that song is the, the sound effects, right? Because when you've got a song the called, cartoon sound <laughs> right, effects, yeah, this is it. <laughs> when you've got a song called the critical beat, down, and he's singing some brutal shit, yeah. and I'm fucking into it, and he's yeah, he's bringing that beat down, and then it goes into Tom and Jerry sound effects <laughs> over the beat down in the song, <laughs> which weird. ruins the beat down. <laughs> because the thing is, like, I, as a ha- as like a very simple minded person, I saw a co- song called the critical beat down, and I actually went. This is must have a great beat down, <laughs> and it would do if it wasn't those fucking sound effects that really ruin it. It's so and bizarre. I guess he's done it for whatever reason, but it's really I didn't, I didn't honestly. I did, but I still think that's a good trap. But th- yeah, that maybe I got a few giggles out of me. I had to wait. <laughs> I, I went back and listened to it a few times. It's like so I literally just hear those sound effects. <laughs> great, it's like cartoon. Yeah. But yeah, generally, all odds. Have you got any th- more thoughts before we drive onto the? The thing that's um, I, I just give credit to the haters real as well. I think that song is poignant and fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. really I would also say the musicians behind this are fucking banging. Yeah, the yeah. band yeah. has a fucking strong. Like I said the mu- musically spot on. Yeah. Like I said, the poignancy between but behind the majority of the lyrics throughout this are fucking fantastic. Like I see, mm-hmm. I think it's fucking nailed it vocally. Yeah, um, and lyrically. Um, yeah, I, I think I said it in, in when we did the Bumbrush single. Like I think I yeah. never gave uh, like Ice T enough credit for how good he is as a yeah, metal vocalist. Yeah, um, and yeah, on this album, he's yeah pretty much flawless. Like for his mm-hmm. delivery, I think some of his lyrics are a bit off, but like it's yeah. like little misfires here and there. But all in all, I think yeah, it's I, still a fantastic album. Yeah, I feel um, like he gets away with it sometimes because of. Who he is. Well, not just who he is, like what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Probably could have, 
the wording of certain phrases probably could have been dealt with a little bit better, but mm. he still has all the point behind what he's saying, so he kind of gets away with it. Yeah. Yeah. So That's it. I'm just talking from a subjective musical standpoint. Oh, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, yeah. I just think, yeah, like, lyrically, there are bits that could have been a little less, like, uh, straightforward, like, Play with play, just play around with your, uh, you know, subterfuge. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think to touch on the bits that we're trying to skirt around a bit much, uh, there's a couple of covers on here. Um, so obviously, I think the big one that you guys we skipped at track four uh, was Ace of Spades. So right, I have a thing about this. Right. One, I don't think anyone should ever cover Ace of Spades. No, I'm sure someone out there they can have. do. It. A better version, not better, a no. good version. <laughs> I just don't think, I think it's just one of those legacy songs that should just be left alone. Mm-hmm. It's not even the best song. It's just, a it's very, not the best Motorhead song. No, it's just, a, it's just the most popular. Yeah. For whatever reason, and I get it, it's fine, but, and the, the, the thing about it is, is like when it came on, like I, I kind of, it's not, it's just not, it's just, I think it's just because the song is, it really bothers me. I don't like it. It doesn't sound very good. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want this. And I feel the fact that, the, the again, so similar to, um, what the fuck, what's it called? My brain's spasming now. When I'm gone, mm-hmm. there's a, sp- a spoken bit where Ice-T comes on and goes, just so, basically, in the sense of, just so you know, every album we cover a song for a, 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 f- a band that's influenced us to show respect sort of thing. And mm-hmm. this would this is Motorhead and rest in goes out to let me, rest in peace, let me. I'm like, okay, that's nice. But at the same time, I don't feel you need to undo that. If you need to speak and announce why you're doing the cover, then you shouldn't do the cover. <laughs> um, just don't ju- don't try and justify it on the record. Yeah. I don't think this is a great cover. I think this band has done much better covers we talked previously about. The, they've done a cover of Rainy Blood, which I highly yeah. recommend. Uh, as well as Suicide Tendencies, Institutionalized. Yeah. This is a more unnecessary one to the point where they don't really bring much to it to make it interesting. But I think the biggest issue with this being on there is... Bung it as your last track. Yeah. Bung it as your last exactly. track on the track album. Track four is such yeah. a good place for it to be. Mm-hmm. I just, it should have really been like a bonus track or yeah, or last track or something. If this was the last track of this album, I would have a completely different view on it. Yeah. It wouldn't have broken up anything. It would have made me just go, oh, cool, they're doing a, a, an Ace Space cover. Crack on, lads. Yeah. I, I don't mind. But because it's smack in the middle, it's like you kind of made me have to be invested because I've just got invested in the other three yeah. opening songs. I'm like, oh, this doesn't sit. Like, it no. doesn't sit the well. I think that's why I say, like, when I was saying earlier, like, I feel like the back end of the album after this cover feels a bit up and down and not as good as, as strong as the first. But I think maybe it's because of this cover. Yeah, like you're in, it's like this is really good. It's so strong. These first two tracks are banging. Uh, what is this Ace of Spades? Uh, what the? Uh, and now I'm off kilter, and, <laughs> and you've kind of got then you then you lose your investment, and then I've got to reinvest. But yeah. the, the song after that isn't as strong as the first three. It's like, ah, uh, just... yeah. It kind of takes a while to pick back up again, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think the cover itself is that bad. I think it's it's a perfectly fine cover. Mm. I just, yeah, I just don't think it needs to be where it is on the album or on the album at all. Yeah, uh, but I mean, if they if they're gonna do it, fine. Yeah, but as you, as you said, Gareth, I think stick it at the end. Uh, but I mean, obviously, it said there's another cover on there as well, which is a nice tea cover. Um, which is uh, the the last yeah. track on the album, the bonus yeah. track, mm-hmm. so six I, in the morning. I like that a lot. Actually, yeah. I thought it was yeah. really good. <laughs> I thought it was a nice a nice version of his his original song in like a metal style. Yeah, I thought it worked really well. It, he obviously knows the words very well, so that's good. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I like that. I think that was a good end to the album. A nice little, as I say, it's listed as a bonus track as well. Uh, so yeah, so all in all, I think it's great album. I think. Yeah. As you said, like it kind of dips after or when uh, Ace of Spades comes in, um, and then it takes a bit of time to pick back up. Yeah, uh, it doesn't quite find its footing, but uh, it doesn't make it a terrible album at all. I enjoyed what I listened to. Um, I'd go back and listen to it again. Mm-hmm. I'd probably skip on the the cover, but yeah, other than that, good album. Yeah, similar yeah. similar to like when we did Dodgy the weekends, like. I'm going to make a playlist for this album just so I can cut out the Post Malone single they stupidly put on the end of the album. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll probably do this and just take the Ace of Spades cover out. Yeah. And then I'll just have a nice solid run of proper body count instead of that one yeah. awkward cover. And I, and I don't want to... I, obviously, they did the best they could with it. But for me, it's just I just don't want anyone to cover that song because it always, to me, sounds like a bad karaoke version. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I've never heard anyone do a cover that song. Yeah, you can't. You can, you can never beat the original with that one. No. no. But no, as a overall, like I mentioned earlier, it's like I feel like I'll, I was never ready for Body Cam to be this good as someone who's just 
Body Camp and me has always been like, oh yeah, it's cool. Like, Ice-T's yeah. metal band. Heard a couple of tracks, <laughs> especially like covers, and just never delved into it. De- this is my first time listening to an entire Body Count album. And I was just nowhere near ready for it to be as good as it is. Yeah. Um, it's not a perfect album by all means, like the points we've gone over, but well recommended. Fucking solid, fun, hardcore tracks with mm-hmm. great messages. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. yeah. Well done, guys. That's fucking mint. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, no, I think a decent re- release. Uh, I'd say go check it out. It's not a goddamn right now because I just don't. I think a lot of people will enjoy it, but you have to be somewhat invested in hardcore and yeah, heavy side of stuff. I yeah, think if, if you're not a hardcore fan, I think you might struggle a bit. But um, I think all in all, it's all right. I'd say, yeah, it's okay. I'd check like, it out. You like See, rap, I, metal, and hardcore. I think if people had no interest in hardcore, you could get them more interested in this. I think you'd have to sell them that the, they'd have to like or have a knowledge of who Ice T is. Probably. Yes, I would agree with that. They'd yeah. have to have at least a knowledge of who yeah. Ice T is. But then I yeah. think this could almost be like a weirdly good introduction to like. By like ease them into a bit of hardcore because it's yeah. something they would have never gone to. <laughs> I was like, wait, but Ice T's in a somewhat metal hardcore band, you yeah, say? Yeah. Yes, have more. <laughs> but I've had that before when I've tried to show Body Count in the past to people, and some people go, oh, you know Ice T? They go, yeah. Oh, he's, doing, he's got a hardcore band. And some people go, oh, really? Like, oh, that'd be interesting. And other people go, okay. <laughs> but no, I, I, I'd I say, thought it was good. <laughs> I'm going to give us more credit. I'll say, God damn yeah. right now. There's loads of people I'd, I, I'd, sh- I'd like to show this to and recommend this to. Um, for just more, not a novelty factor, more like in a funny way, more for the like, holy shit, like give the man credit where credit's due. This dude can release a fucking solid hardcore album. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. Go check it out. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon um, you. Yeah. Moving on to the last album of the week. So Downswing dropped their new album, Good Intentions. Uh, we've mentioned this band a couple of times on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. And they put a single out early last year called Frequency, which I really loved. Uh, I was kind of sad not to see that song in the sound, but I think they've kind of stepped away a little bit from that because that was like a very straight up hardcore track. I felt uh, with some clean vocals, and it's now kind of gone more. This this is more of a metalcore album. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, so, but it, and I think we've spoken on the podcast a couple of times about metalcore bands. I lost interest in the metalcore genre many years ago, and only a few bands make the cut where I go, "Oh, this is actually really good." And I'll listen to this on a regular basis. This is one of those albums. And this is one of those bands that have, they've slipped through, and I'm like, I'm down with this. This is good metalcore for me. Uh, just it's a, a nice mix of like heavy with hardcore, and obviously the more metal stuff. Um, and obviously there's nice clean vocals on there. It's just a good blend, mm-hmm. and it's not. I just feel it's not hundred percent as generic as some of the other metalcore releases that come out. It just I feel like it's a bit on its own. I think the things that like, get me like some of the vocals sound like Vanna, late Vanna stuff, which I, I love the late Vanna stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I could, I could definitely see that. Yeah. For me, it kind of had like similar, like somewhere in between, like old school while she sleeps and mm. some of the heavier under earth. Yeah, uh, and then like say, yeah, the Vanna stuff as well definitely mm-hmm. fits in there. Um, but yeah, it is one of those like genuinely interesting metal car albums. Uh, like, there's a lot going on on there, um, and yeah, no, I, I don't percent agree. Like, it is one of those rare ones that does something interesting with yeah. the genre. No, I. I basically completely agree. So, as someone who's never been massively into metalcore, mm-hmm. um, and not to just keep being like, you know, plastering the word metalcore across this band, yeah, but, but as someone, who, yeah, <laughs> but as someone who you know hears this music and only goes, oh, fair enough, not for me. It's hard to turn away from if even if you're not that into this music, which I found where there's so much in here, which is so fucking good that I can kind of turn a blind eye to the aspects of metalcore, which. Uh, uh, don't really sit well with me. Yeah. Um, but then there's us. So the main things I've always had issues with with bands like this is more of the, the the when the cleaner vocals come in, especially if I'm not sort of down with the sort of the the vocal style, which normally comes with it. Never normally wins me over. Mm-hmm. This are times of this where like fuck me, fair play, you got me, you won me over with that as well. Um, <laughs> it's like I think disgrace fucking tune I, I, I really enjoyed that was one of the bit more of a slow build if I remember um, unless I mixed it up with despair it was, no it was disgrace yeah. Um, yeah this is I've enjoyed this more than basically any other <laughs> uh, within the genre for the longest I can remember Yeah, and I would not have thought I'd sit down and listen to this album and be given like two thumbs up but like fucking solid like mm. really good I think the only other metalcore band or hardcore metalcore band that sneaked through the Gap in the last couple of years is probably Sharp Tooth. Yeah, yeah, Sharp Tooth. Maybe renounced for me. Uh, yeah, I was a big fan of them. Yeah, 
Uh, obviously, Ithaca are kind of floating in that kind of genre a little bit, but yeah, this is the one like this is the most out and out in that mm. kind of genre. Uh, the thing I love about this album the most is it's pretty unrelenting. Mm. Oh um, god, yeah. Obviously, there's there's the sec- there's the small sections with like clean vocals and stuff like that, but they usually like the kind of like dr- like following the driving force, which is the music. Uh, like the guitars on this are beautiful uh, in mm. in the most horrendous way possible. <laughs> yeah, uh, and the drums as well. Um, and yeah, no, I I am one hundred percent down for this kind of stuff. Like if if this is what metalcore is in twenty twenty, I'm happy for a resurgence in it. Mm. Yeah, I completely agree. This this is the most sort of like intro within this genre, the most interesting thing I've heard in a while. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's almost like a bit of a copy of my review of Piers. Where this is like within one genre, a band has managed to sort of like just you know transcend a bit and sort of Take have enough fans. of their own flair and enough yeah. quality to sort of give it a bit of new life. And I think Downswing deserve that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I'll just mention quickly, like so. Also, some guest vocals. Every good album has guest vocals on it these oh, days, yeah. apparently. So obviously, track three, uh, carbon copy guest vocals from Vincent Bennett, which is the vocalist of Casey Train. Mm-hmm. And you can fucking tell because his vocals are fucking. Horrible. I mean that, <laughs> and I mean that in a good way. Yeah, uh, just fucking heavy, yeah. nasty fucking vocals, and it really adds that track beautifully. Also, despair features a uh, vocalist Aiden Holmes, not to be confused with Aiden Holmes from Morning TV in the UK, because <laughs> that's Aiden Holmes. Uh, when, you, when I googled Aiden Holmes, that's who came up. So. Check, check if it's highlighted all to correct or not. Here, <laughs> yeah. All right? uh, yeah, it, it took me a while to find out who this was. It's the vocalist of Alpha Wolf. <laughs> okay. That means nothing to you guys. Nope. <laughs> uh, a heavy as fuck Mount Cool. band. Cool. They're all right. Sure. Uh, maybe they'll release something one day and we'll talk about it. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, no, so some nice additional guest vocals there. Uh, I look forward to hearing more. Like, I've listened to this album a bunch, I think, and I'll, I think I'll pick a couple of favourite tracks, put them on a playlist and all that shit. Uh, and hope they maybe one day come to the UK and I can check them out live. I think that'd, that'd be, be cool. nice. Maybe come over with Sharp Tooth, two, two birds on still. That'd be nice for me. Thank you. <laughs> they did tour together in Canada with Cancer Bats, which now I've heard this band properly. Yeah, now Sounds that like seems like one of the tour. best lineups ever, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> disgustingly good. Yeah. Yeah. So. If you want to recreate that in the UK, that would be delicious. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, please. <laughs> yes, thank you, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd say go check this out. Uh, yeah. Do I come right now? Yeah, yeah. Check out Goddamn Right Now just on the fact that if, if you're loving a bit of metalcore or hardcore or whatever, I think this is a good spin. Yeah. I say Goddamn Right Now based on the fact that it's metalcore and I actually really liked it, so that's got to say something because that's something that I don't normally say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think Gareth yeah, like metalcore. Yeah. Big <laughs> yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, I think for me this is one of those things where it's like it's a band finally doing something genuinely interesting with a genre that can quite easily slip into like sim- like samey territory. And a very cliched, but these guys managed to do something really interesting with it. Uh, and yeah, I would 100% say check it out, goddamn, right now. Sick! Another good week. Look at that. I'm flying through. Yeah, no, right. 2020 is buzzing for new music, and I'm loving it. It is. So we started, such it started off months. really weak, to be fair. But <laughs> well, yeah. This last month has been fucking great. I mean, I can't remember, so probably quite poor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we started off that Bring Me Rise and EP, which was terrible. So. Oh, that was, that was a, a tough start. But we're back I like now. that. Shut you. Well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you tell me shut up. You shut up. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was it for this week. I'd say check out the bands. That, the, I think the longest album on that list is Body Count, which is 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. For some reason, somehow that Downswing album is less than 30 minutes. I don't understand how that's mm. possible. But fucking good quick slice yeah. of that. and you, it, Within an hour, you can listen to Pairs and Downswing. That's a good day right there. I know. It's mm-hmm. only one hour. Bang him. So that's it. We'll be back next week. Uh, fucking forgot. <laughs> Something's out next week. I forgot what it was. Something to the good. calendar. To the calendar. I, I think I Code Orange. It's Code Orange. Yeah. yeah, Code Orange next week, and something yeah. else I've already forgotten about. Sure. Which not to uh, not to dissuade us from giving an objective opinion, <laughs> but mm-hmm. apparently the Code Orange album got the first ten out of ten in Metal Hammer. Oh, wow. uh, in about oh well, in five <laughs> years or ten years, I think it is. Christ, who was wow. the last band they yeah. gave that to? Uh, the first, it was the first, the first hardcore album to ever get one. Oh, but, yeah. okay. Oh, okay. Because the other ones would have all been metal albums, probably. Yeah, mm-hmm, probably. But yeah, no, it's been so. It's been a while since we've had one. So yeah, 
So mm. expecting good things. Mm. I mean, it kind of makes me want to slate it now, even if it's good. Oh yeah, I'm gonna shoot. <laughs> <laughs> gonna we'll see because that first single wasn't very good. But that the second, second one was very good. <laughs> yeah, was, I'm interested to hear what it sounds like as a whole. Maybe I like that set first single now as a whole piece. I, 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 think, I it. think it has a, a good chance of yeah. it will lend itself well to the album. It was a yeah. weird first single, I think, to pick. Mm. It's code or it's gonna be good, isn't it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Of course yeah. it is. <laughs> it's probably something else out. I forgot it. Don't matter. We'll work it out. Moving on. So that was it for new music this week. Um, and now we're going to play the best game show in all of podcast history. <laughs> the only game show in this podcast this history. history. <laughs> don't, don't trust, trust the, the internet. internet. Yeah, don't trust the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Gareth. Break it down. We're into round three. The scores currently are six points to Badger, three mm-hmm. points to Paul. So, Paul, yeah. do better. Do you want to... You're not explain the basic premise in case no one's ever listened to before. Literally, I was about to do your bell in, so chill out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get the basis of this game okay. is I find a random, weird, and wonderful review of Amazon of a band. Uh, then I give you three choices of bands. You choose which one you think that review was for. If you get it right, you get a bonus point if you can name the actual album. Yes. Are we all clear? Yes. Cool. Yes. And also, if you haven't followed any of these... No surprise that they're all one-star reviews and the people have disorders. Issues. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, so are you ready? Yes. Sure. This review <laughs> is from Paul92. What? I know. Not so long ago, I stumbled across this band and now I wish I had fell off and knocked myself unconscious because this is just absolute noise. <laughs> A few power chords and your average bridey who could scream down the mic. One star, brackets, zero stars. <laughs> <laughs> is that because he has to give it at least one star? He has to give it one star, yeah. so He's adamant livid about it. <laughs> right, do you want that repeat? Are you good? Yeah. No, yeah so, fine. your choices are, what's that for? The Distillers, mm. Arch Enemy, or Paramore? Okay. Uh, Paul, do you want to start us off? What are you thinking? Um, I mean, the go-to quite easily would be Arch Enemy, but... Uh, just for power metal cards. Uh, but I don't know. I think it might just be an idiot on the internet again. Um, oh, no. These are all idiots on the internet. <laughs> don't, don't mix that up. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, no, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give this idiot a bit more um, a bit more credit than he probably deserves. Uh, and I'm gonna say, yeah, Arch Enemy. Okay. I'll lock that in and you, sir, are playing with fire, giving the internet credit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Badger, what are you thinking? Was it power metal cards? Uh, what he said is, uh, oh, uh, it's absolute noise, a few power chords, and your average bridey who can scream down a mic. Average what? Bridey. Bridey? Yeah. What the fuck's a bridey? Fucking, you tell me, mate. Ask Paul92. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Paul92, so, hit me up. Uh, I think that's how he refers to women. Possibly. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Average bridey. I think as he said power chords, I'm, I was, I'm tempted to say, well, it's, it could be fucking distills off. Paramore because they probably both use power cards and they both if a bride is a woman they both have female singers <laughs> that's just not an down. <laughs> you're doing great I know right <laughs> I'm going to go Distillers because I just reckon that's more noisy than Paramore yeah. is and also Bridey sounds a bit like Brody <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. maybe just not Brody wrong. I know right right you going for that yeah right Um. well unfortunately for this game, neither of you get points. It was ah, actually for Paramore. Dang. Um, you don't get the bonus point, but would you like to guess which Paramore album it was a review of? Uh, I don't know their albums. <laughs> yeah, we always have this issue. I always assume you guys know album names. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fuck. Oh, this is the second album called. <laughs> I mean, I can't help you. I just had a bitch about you guys not knowing. I can't help you if this is, is the second album or not. I don't think it is. Riot. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Say, is it Riot? Uh, there's also, was it? Oh, crap. Uh, I can't remember what the first album was called. That's what I was going to go with originally. Oh, All We Know Is Falling, was that Yes, it? that's it. Yeah. No, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the title of this review and that will definitely help you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You'll want brand new ears after this. Oh, uh, oh, brand new eyes. Right, brand new eyes was the album that this yeah. person fucking hated, apparently. I bet he was really smug with that title. <laughs> oh, he, honestly, he was high fiving himself all day long. <laughs> in the I mirror. got that bridey told. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking bridey. What is bridey? I, I, I don't know. He, he doesn't go outside or have. Is co- it what co- sardines come in? I, I so, just, yeah. just assume that all the people who read these reviews and aren't yeah. allowed out of the house. <laughs> yeah. uh, are you ready for 
Third one? Second. Second, Second one. one. <laughs> Maybe. Sorry. You've got this. Do you remember what I said earlier that I haven't slept yet? <laughs> yeah. It's been a long 24 hours. Uh, <laughs> title of this, Stop, I Think You All Dropped Your Brains. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've got nothing good to say. I know, let's all grunt over some random so-called hardcore whilst pretending we stand out by using synth to fill out bits our useless brains can't process. Josh Holmes said it best, our generation is truly for sale. <laughs> How has this got good reviews? You're all nuts. This is not original, it's all been done before and much better than this giant steamy poop on the lawn of the music industry by the ill-behaved dog of emo tripe. <laughs> Christ, this guy needs a punctuate. I'm trying to stick to how he's writing it and I was dying then. I need to lie down. Do yourself a favour and buy some Switchfoot or some Led Zeppelin. What? Right, that's it. But I'd Switchfoot that like Christian rock band. Mm-hmm. Maybe? Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> that's a review. Okay, I've got an idea. Is that... So- Sorry, just before you who who was the review from? Um, oh, unfortunately, this guy didn't give himself a name. It's sort of unknown Amazon. Uh, ah, yeah, shame. Some people are are, are smart to keep themselves secret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So your choices are Enter Shikari, You Me at Six, or Hadouken. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, it could be any of those. Oh, oh. Do you want, who do you want to go first? Uh, well, Paul went first last oh, okay. time, so Badger. Is that the default farm that we're doing now? Yeah, yeah, okay. we'll go back and forth. Okay, Keep it enough. somewhat fair. Yeah. <laughs> or not. The whole review, I had the dead West proud in my head. <laughs> and then it's not a choice. <laughs> you didn't say that. <laughs> no, it's really, really put me over. Uh, I'm going to say N. Shikari, based on the fact he said synth. And did he say screamy shouty vocals or something? Uh, let's grunt over some random so-called hardcore. Was yeah. one of the lines. Well, it won't be you meet six. And Hadouken were like a dance act or something. Mm-hmm. So it's got to be Ed Shikari. Go for that. I feel the problem with this one is I don't think you know enough similar artists. If it is Ed Shikari, I feel like you didn't don't know enough other synthy hardcore bands to put in the list. Okay. <laughs> Unless it's you I mean, six, the internet fucking exists, man. Sure. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Doesn't all have to go off my own knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> go on. All right, Paul. What are you thinking? Um, I mean, Badger missed a lot of good points there. I don't think you know enough bands like Santa Shikari. Um, <laughs> Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. No. Under Oath. Your mind. All those bands with synths in. Yeah, so many synths. Mm. Um, again, I feel like I gave the internet a lot of credit last time, and mm-hmm. I don't think it deserved it. No. Um, so I'm going to say Hadouken. Oh. Final answer? Probably not, but go ahead. Paul, there's no help in you. That was easy. It was obviously Andrew Shikari. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they were the easiest points I could give on here. The choices were between that and Yumi 6 and Hadouken. Can I clarify a point? If we both get it right, we both get a point. Yeah. Just stop. Don't have to answer the different things we've got. <laughs> <laughs> so, Badger, you two get a point for that. Would yeah. you like another point for guessing the album? Uh, uh, take to the skies. You're correct. It was yes. Take to the skies. Yes. Uh, Paul... Hello. Badger's got five more points than you. I know. He doesn't care. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> I know. I told you, like, yes, last week was a minor blip. I was aiming for zero. I didn't mean <laughs> to get points last week. <laughs> okay. Mistake. Whatever. Whatever keeps you going. Um, <laughs> are you ready mainly. for a review of James Lucas Chatfield? <gasps> also known Kinda. as JLC in his crew. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving them backstories now. Yeah, okay. I like it. <laughs> it's from the tough streets of Birmingham. Uh, right, bear with me. This guy's uh this guy likes to go okay. in deep. I'm, right. I'll say he's also if he, he if he writes like an idiot, mm-hmm. just read it like you would, because otherwise it's gonna be hard to watch. No, this is just how I read. And so, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh the title of this one is Boy, Do These Guys Suck? Imagine if. Guess he doesn't really need to write anything else. Oh no, he needs about 20 paragraphs. Okay, fuck. Let's get into it. I'll set mine. (laughs) I can't believe these boring, redundant, whiny little dweebs actually sell CDs. Proof positive that the music industry is becoming its own big corporation. The songs all sound pretty much alike. They're all about hate, pain, self-loathing, and other negative stuff. (laughs) Which would be fine if it wasn't at all such a simplistic level. There's nothing to relate you here unless you're a 13-year-old skater rat who's pissed at his stepdad for grounding him for having his haircut. And let's discuss the whole vocal thing. We've got four choices of vocal styles. 
Pansy 98 degrees reject crooning. What? half assed Axl Rose impression from karaoke night. A disgruntled video store clerk trying to rap because that's what the girl he works with likes and maybe she'll like him now. Or... D, none of the above. Go buy some real music. Tool, Alice on Chains, Face No More, or any other for, any other forgotten great sets are getting shamelessly apes left right these days. That one went wrong, wasn't it, when he was writing that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. And then he writes, Hmm. In short, I'd rather spend five minutes mashing my... I can't, I don't, I try not to laugh. In short, I'd rather spend five minutes smashing my testes in a car door <laughs> than listen to this ever again. One star. <laughs> just want to point out those forgotten greats like Tool, Wood Faith, and Warner Chains, who like some of the biggest bands on the planet. <laughs> totally overlooked. I think he could have just, just killed it by re- writing, it's like slamming my testes in a car door. Yeah. Uh, that should have been the title. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for some choices? Yeah. Is that Mudvayne? Is that Ooh. Papa Roach? Or is that Linkin Park? Ooh. Paul, to you. Linkin Park. Okay, yeah. Feel <laughs> Sorry, free to just... just say the first thing comes to your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, all the way through you in describing that, where it's like all the multiple vocal styles, it's like, it's got to be Linkin Park. It's got to be Linkin Park. He's talking about the kind of bands that were like, kind of big around that time. And it's like, yeah, it's, it must be him. It must cool. be them. And then it's it 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 like, yeah, it must be that. Paul's using his logical brain. Will and that backfire again? Oh, <laughs> 100%. Yeah, no, I'll, it'll definitely fail me. <laughs> right, I'll lock you with a Linkin Park. Badger, your thoughts? Uh, what were the other two bands? Uh, Papa Roach or Mudvayne? Won't be Mudvayne. What were the vocal styles again? Oh, well, they were multiple. Yeah. Uh, Pansy 98 Degrees Reject Crooning, half ass Axel Rose Impression from Karaoke Night, a disgruntled <laughs> video game clerk trying to rap, um, or none of the above. And he goes on. It's that first on, one that really confused on. me. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is hard because Papa Roach is, could probably be in that but I think Linkin Park's a good shout uh, brum, 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 brum. <laughs> I'm trying to think about Papa Roach know what's going on in your head maybe say it out loud it's a podcast <laughs> it's a podcast where we record audio. audio I can't really do internal screaming <laughs> uh, you're just trying to sing different aspects of Budvay, Papa Roach and Linkin Park in your head like which one sounds like a Pansy 98 Degree or Axl Rose karaoke? It's that Axl Rose karaoke which was confusing as well. I'm going to say Papa Roach just to be different. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to be different. Yeah, right. Right, final answer? They're a bit bitchy as well. Yeah, true. Just, yeah, go on. Paul, you got a point! It's yeah. Linkin Park! Because once oh, again, of course shit. it's Linkin Park. Oh, sorry, are we going for the loser streak? Yeah. Well, tough. Now you're back in the running. Would you <laughs> like a bonus point? Can you guess the album that review was for? They've only got three Ooh. albums. There's so many three. albums. It feels like they've only got three albums. <laughs> that um, second one doesn't count. Uh, hybrid Theory? That's another point for Paul. He's yeah, pulling it back. <laughs> and this guy fucking hated Hybrid Theory. Yes. Sure. Um, one of the biggest new metal albums ever. Yeah. Right, this next one. We're getting a bit weird because I'm going to give you two reviews <gasps> for the same album. Yes, no. I know. Uh, it basically comes down to I liked both of these. <laughs> There's nothing much more to it than I read that. I was like, I would like to share these with the world. Okay. I don't think enough people are sharing the dog shit dark side of Amazon, <laughs> except for right here, right now. Dark so, Amazon. are you ready for your first review slash clue for what it could be? The title of this just says Corn. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> Is it corn? Maybe. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. These hippie scumbags don't even know how to name a song. Then they name a song. <laughs> what the hell is that supposed to be? These losers may have a few fans, but if you want real metal, you have to check out Corn and Limp Biscuit. Fred Durst is the greatest lyricist in the history of the world. Other great metal bands like Blink-182, Lit, Lit, do you remember fucking Lit? Lit, Jimmy Eat World are just posing limp and corn, but it's all right. You can't beat perfection. Review number one for this album. Okay, so let us settle. That was the best one. The second review title is Lame Metallica Wannabes. I foolishly listened to this pile of dirt, cruelly passed off as music, because I heard it was a good metal. 
What a dumb idea. <laughs> a singular metal. <laughs> yeah, exactly what it says. <laughs> what a dumb idea. Our lame Metallica, their new stuff, wannabes. These tasteless copycats stole riffs from Saint Anger and Death Magnetic and put it on this lame album like they created them. Skip these <clears throat> hacks and listen to real metal like Nora Jones. New Metallica, Disturbed, Slipknot, Jewel, Stained, and Puddle of Mud. We all good. Yeah. Are yeah. you ready for your choices? I have so many questions. <laughs> are you ready for your... Well, would you like to ask a question before yeah, your go, choices? Go on, no, go on. To your, choices. your choices are Megadeth, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath. Wow. Okay. I was not ready for these options. Right? <laughs> what did... It... So, the backtrack. <laughs> so many things were said. I know. <laughs> did he say... Lit was a metal band. He said Lit is yeah. a metal band as well as Blink One Eight Two and Jimmy Eat World. And he also said Fred Durst is the greatest lyricist yeah. in the history of. I mean, I gave him too much credit here. I said the world. He actually wrote uh, Thy World. <laughs> Thy I mean, world. he's not wrong. You don't in that sentence. Just throw, no, why mean, are you throwing a thy in there unless you said to yourself, no, "Today I, mean, I will write no, no, no. thy." I think Paul's agreeing the fact he's the best vocalist in the world. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Fred, I mean, he did it off the Nookie. Come on, yeah, yeah. the Nookie. Yeah, the Nookie. The Nookie. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Don't take my cookie. Oh, I'm sick of you. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Don't want this on the podcast. <laughs> uh, uh, fuck me. Uh, the thing is as well, like, like, he's like, he's stolen riffs off <laughs> St. Anger and what was the other one called? Death Magnetic. Death Magnetic. The worst Metallica album. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, man. So, either Megadeth, I may or Black Sabbath ripped off Metallica. At their mm. worst. <laughs> At their worst. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easily. My con- like my my first thing is, surely someone would know that the the Dave from Megadeth was in Metallica. So you, you think, think so, wouldn't you? You think they know that, but then it's the, you think. <laughs> but then he followed it up with. So. Yeah, I'm gonna say he, he followed it up with a list of metal bands that yeah. are the furthest from metal I've ever heard. Um, well, this is hard. Mm. I can't even think. The problem with this is, I, I, I'm imagining it's recent. It's got well. It's got to be after. Oh, fuck, this is a hard one. <laughs> I can't remember like, like last time an Iron Maiden album came out. Or a Megadeth album. I don't follow those bands. Um, Iron Maiden brought out Book of Souls last, I'd say, like 2016, probably. It can't be Sabbath, because uh, there's no way a Sabbath riff could sound like a Metallica riff. Surely. 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 Uh, I'm going to go Megadeth. Just because this guy doesn't understand who Dave Mustang is. Mustang. You don't know either, apparently. Know. No, it's I Mustang. Mustang. <laughs> I don't care. Dave has recently been sponsored by Mustang Cars, <laughs> and he has changed his name because yeah. of it. Right, I mean, so I called can... the guy from Dillinger Pistachio earlier, so True, don't but fucking I'm, yeah. criticise me. Can't argue that. <laughs> right, you're locking in Megadeth? <laughs> yes. Paul, your thoughts? What are you going for? Uh, um... <laughs> Remember, your choices for a band that's ripped off Metallica and bands like Lit are better. Uh, Megadeth, Iron Maiden, or Black Sabbath? I kind of want to say a Black Sabbath because this guy sounds like a fucking idiot. No, no, no. These guys. Sorry, these guys sound also, like Also, I didn't idiots. give credit where credit's due. Uh, the once titled Corn, that is a Richard J. Claspy. Okay. Uh, and then the one that said Lame Metallica Wallabies is Kelsey. Oh, Kelsey. Yeah. yeah. Just Kelsey. You crazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going for? Um, I want to say Black Sabbath because just I just think that yeah, the internet's. If this game show has taught me anything, it's that the internet are fucking idiots, and, uh, and that them. they won't know yeah. who the hell Black Sabbath are. Mm-hmm. A very fair point. You both had, you know, some rational thought going into that. Thanks. One because of the the, the tie in with yeah. Metallica and Megadeth, mm-hmm. and Paul's based on the fact that the internet is dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> always yeah. vote on the internet being dumb. Paul, you get the point. It's Black yeah. Sabbath. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Oh, is it- I, I, the internet is weird. Don't trust them. <laughs> That's how I came up with this game. Oh <laughs> uh, would you like to, for a bonus point, guess which Black Sabbath album it was? I feel there's only no. one album you can choose, really, isn't there? <laughs> Not necessarily. Mm. I mean, yeah, there's a few. Um, I mean, the obvious one would be something like Paranoid, but I'm going to go with... No, fuck it, yeah, Paranoid. No, it was nice. a self-titled album, ah. Black Sabbath. I would have said 13. Oh, right. No, no, no. The, both those reviews came in before that even came out. Oh, okay, that yeah. one was from 2005 and another was from 2009. Oh, okay. Yeah. People be know. crazy. <laughs> um, right, we've got one more in us. Are you ready to go? Have we go got on, one then. more in us? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, first of all, 100% credit to what might be the best possible name um, for Amazon reviews. Okay. Better than Khan. Well, ev- no, no, no. This is the, the reviewer themselves. Okay. Okay. So first of all, they did that thing where you press the caps lock in between every letter. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, dumb Scar Freak. Excellent. <laughs> Pretty sh- this might have been me. <laughs> 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 Reading out your own drunken episode. Yeah, I just don't remember. Right, are you ready for the review? I'm pretty sure these are all Gareth from Money. i got to try yeah, and, yeah, sure. to be fair, when I run out of finding good ones, that's just what I'll do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Considering the broken English, I thought they were all yours, but you... Uh, yeah. right, i got to try really hard now not to say the name of the bankers in the review quite a bit, so okay. bear with me. I didn't edit it for myself, so I'm just going to try my luck. Well, that's on you. Yeah, it's totally on me. I yeah. gave up at this point. I spent too much time <laughs> doing this. Read, drive, dr- 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 you know... Fucking pains you after a while going through these reviews. Yeah, yeah. I imagine it's as painful as editing a podcast. <laughs> right, you're ready. On one, but yeah. I don't know why I have this CD. You bought it. Solid totally. start, right? <laughs> well, or did he? The story uh, thickens. Uh. I think the only reason I have it is because I stole it. Anyways, <laughs> you see. <laughs> well, why are you leaving an Amazon review then? You can't steal from Amazon. <laughs> Anyways, you seriously have to be deaf or some kind of mental disorder to consider this music. Wow. This band has no talent. It literally took me about 10 minutes to play all their songs perfectly on guitar. All right, brag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're getting to play guitar. This CD was almost well worth stealing. The only purpose it serves was flipping it from my window at that annoying neighbor kid. I don't know why everyone in my school likes them so much. I guess you would... you. Sorry. I guess you would like this if you hate everything or if you have issues. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, this person is is weird. I my right. If you hate it so much, why did you learn them on guitar? That's my question. To prove the point that he could learn this entire album in under ten minutes. I don't want to learn this, but I'm going to just to say it on Amazon. <laughs> he didn't pay for it. He stole it and then threw it at his neighbour. Cool. Sure. Nailed it. <laughs> right. Are you ready? Yeah. Your options are Limp Biscuits, Slipknot, or System of a Down. Mm. Uh, Paul, we're going back to you for your first choice this time. So tell me, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm thinking that there's no chance somebody in school learn uh, Slipknot or <laughs> yeah. System of a Down. D- sorry, there's minutes. no chance in hell this idiot learned any of these songs. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The okay. guy called himself Dumb Scar Freak. Again, pass that- it back into giving the guy too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd do that dumb thing of giving the internet credit. What am I doing? <laughs> um, I mean, I s- the internet lets us put this podcast out of the world, so don't ever trust the internet. Mm, that's true. Yeah, we are on the internet fair. as we speak. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, we are. Sorry, internet. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Limp Biscuit. Okay. And purely because I think they're the simplest riffs out of the three. So you're still based based on, I'm still on the basing fact that you think this guy learned this. <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe, or maybe that's where I'm going wrong. But I'm still going to go Limp Biscuit. Okay, he could literally be the best guitarist on the planet. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Or he could just be a cock. <laughs> Fair enough. Are you lock it in, Limp Biscuit. Go on then. I'll Limp Biscuit for Paul Badger. What are you thinking? That's the thing. I'm just give Paul shade for this, but I'm also thinking think about the simple <laughs> Remember, he stole this album, learned it all, and then threw it at a neighbour kid. kid. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so everyone knows. Was there anything else in the review? Um, but the was... CD was almost worth stealing. Uh, Just having issues. You seriously have to be deaf or some kind of mental disorder to consider this music. Charming. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Just generally, a bit of a twat. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. Fair. I think I'll have to go on Limbus as well, just get sounds... It just sounds like it would be Le Volume Skit, and I can't imagine it being about Slipknot or System of a Down. I don't know. It's hard, man. Are you deciding on Slipknot uh, uh, or Slip Ball, System of a Down? The Biscuit? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, fuck. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. I really so we got want to two for Limp Biscuit? Yeah, fuck it. You think this guy learned every Limp Biscuit song? No, but. N- no, he learned every Slipknot song. <laughs> <laughs> You're both incorrect. Oh, uh, need, no one gets points, but for the fuck of it, can you guess what album he learned every single song of in ten minutes? Significant Other. Significant Other. Okay, that's the album, isn't it? Right, Limp Bizkit. Well, considering, oh, I no, said, sorry, I you're wrong. <laughs> I was like, and sorry, Slipknot is the massive, answer. Massive brain fart. Yeah, <laughs> you were just too 
used I'm, to I'm be in really, white, I guess. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> Sorry. Um, What's the, that album is this idiot talking about? <laughs> self-titled. Self-titled. self-titled, Paul, what do you think? Uh, Iowa? It is Iowa! Wait, in no ten point. minutes, okay. he learned every song of Iowa. Bullshit. Uh, I think so. I call bullshit. Yeah. So no That's points it. in that final think. round, I'm afraid, but... At the end of that, Paul has somewhat got points back and is now only two behind Badger. Badger uh, is on eight points and Paul is on six. Yeah. Congrats all round for getting some points. Thanks. Uh, and that was fine. Don't Trust the Internet. Yeah. Don't well Trust the Internet. Hey. Some good reviews in there. I enjoyed some of those <laughs> thoroughly. Yeah. Can't wait to finish Thanks, this America. podcast. <laughs> finish this podcast and go listen to that great metal band lit. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. Oh, Lord. Also, Jimmy World. I keep skipping the fight. And I'm Blink. Blink is I'm the first band in that. Just like, oh, just, fuck and fuck. obviously, you can't listen to Black Sabbath ever again without thinking, oh, these cunts just ripped off Metallica. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm wasting my time Andrew. listening to Black Sabbath when I could be listening to My Own Worst Enemy. By the late. With a bit of St. Anger. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Um, that was it. Nice one. New episode in the can. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Uh, if you want to support us, in a way that costs you zero money, just a small amount of your time, which is probably more precious, but don't worry about it. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at Pod UK, uh, Instagram, Pod. We're on Facebook, just search for Loud Noises Podcast. It should come up. If it doesn't, then whatever. You tried. Um, yeah, you tried, <laughs> but that's all that matters. Just tell us you tried, and I'll take your word for it. Uh, also, if you want to be super cool and kind to us, and you've got an iPhone, leave an iTunes review. It helps us reach other people, and other people might go, yeah, this podcast is subpar. And we'll all move on with our lives. But what a great quiz. Well, what a... <laughs> <laughs> Their opinions aren't invalidated. What a cracking quiz. <laughs> that game makes me feel better about my own reviews, basically. Good. Yeah. Just, it, I'm just reason I brought it up. It just makes me feel a bit better. I, oh, I thought you meant, oh, for a second, I thought you meant you left Amazon reviews. Oh, no, calm down. <laughs> I have a life. <laughs> just copy down what you send the podcast and just write onto Amazon. <laughs> I'll tell you something else I have found when doing this is you can go on to, so say, dumb, crazy freak guy who reviewed that Slipknot. I can go, I wonder if he left any other reviews. Go on to his account, and then go from there like, yes, he left reviews to 20 other people. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've seen him again. I don't think we've seen him again, <laughs> but it was definitely him when I think I first found that out. So I've just gone down to people. To people rabbit holes and will review fucking anything. <laughs> anywho. Anywho. Excellent. Right. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. We'll be back next week, I say, with that Code Orange review. Another round of don't trust the internet and then whatever else happens between now and next time. Sure. Cheers very much for listening. Bye. Unless Bye. you all die of coronavirus. Bye. Don't do that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>